But something good Oh, something good Oh, something good Get high Get the floor before you go We are the 2015 Head of the Dark Sub Challenge. Unfortunately, this year the course has had to be shortened down to a seven mile, so it's a three and a half mile down, three and a half mile back. So it's reduced from the 10 mile original downwind because the headwind is just too strong at the moment. And most of the fleet are from the cruising class, so almost 100 people including, which is fantastic. And then we have 50 people in the elite, so it's been a great turnout for the cruising <laughs> class this year. There we are, Dave Hackford entering the water. The man behind the race, it's all been, this race has all been put on by the starboard and Tushingham crew. Good to see Dave entering it this year and not stuck in a rescue boat like last year. Ben Fisher, 135. It's going to be interesting to see Ben this year because he's in a hardball this year. Last year he did it on the Nash One design board, which is a great board but an ice up. And the hard Nash board is obviously going to be significantly faster. So we'll see how he's um, going to do. Ryan James. New board, Mistral. Basically, that board's just come out of the custom shaping bay literally on Tuesday, so he hasn't even traced it yet. Um, I'm going to see how fast he's on that today. Obviously, he's got a lot. He's had it head of dart for several years now, the first place win, so he's going to be pushing hard to keep that. And that's it, they're off. It looked like a good start. I don't think there's been any complaints. So what's happening now, they're straight off the mark, they're all quite spread out, but they'll end up coming in together and they'll start picking off each other, drafting behind a certain rider. I think we've got Paul Simmons there looking at the front left-hand side of starboard. Ryan James is pushing very hard on the right-hand side there, he's with the new Mistral. He's got nobody following him. He usually charges ahead and tries to get nobody drafting on his tail, and that's definitely what he's doing here as well. So, guys in the front of the pack that made a good charge, we had Ryan James on the left who shot off, Paul Simmons on the right, equal to Ryan James, and then behind Paul Simmons we had Peter Holiday who's starting to draft into Paul. They'll probably end up coming together, but we'll see what happens when they return. And this is the second batch, Elite 12-6. They've shot off on the far left-hand side. You can see it's really windy here, but far left-hand side you see Ben Fisher's really digging deep. He's got the chokehold paddle, he's got the Connor Baxter lower paddle stroke. Look at him go, he's off on the right hand side. Who have we got here? Giles and the Fanatic there, he isn't, he's been back on it. So they're all coming back in. First race of the season, eager to see how everybody's going to start performing. Oh, Scott Warren on the far right on the starboard here. Yeah, they're all looking, trying to find who the best person to match with, who they're going to stick with. Another good start for the Elite. They're, the pack's really tightening up there on the 12-6 Elite class. Look there, just off the start. Ben Fisher's definitely in the lead. It looks like Scott Warren's dropped a few places back in, but they're going to, they'll probably get quite a tight pack, those guys up there. They'll be, We'll see how they um, fare on the return, see who's dropped off the back. Okay, so look at this great turnout for the cruising class. It's so good to see a lot of people on the start line here. Still got a few different classes in the cruising class, so we've still got some different colour bibs. We've got 12 sixes, 14 foot unlimited. And that's it, there's the horn, they're off. The question of the cruising class, or any class, actually, do you dig deep straight off the line and go for it? and maybe weigh yourself out, or do you just go slow and steady, but keep that good pace?
And I think surprisingly straight away, far left hand side, the uh, Red Powder Co XL is charging off the block. I think the cruising class, we've got everything from all round ice ups to performance race boards to homemade boards to some surf ups, looks like 9.5s over there and stuff, so absolutely everything. So you haven't got to have a 12.6 full on race board to start, come down and do a race or a challenge. Okay, so Andy Joyce on the 17 foot unlimited in the unlimited class, taking the first finish on the head of the dart. Head down, Andy Joyce coming in. Obviously training for the Team GB has been paying off. Bringing home the unlimited class, 17 foot, cruising to the, through the finish line, first place for the unlimited. Not that far behind, to be totally honest, Ryan James is pushing hard his new Mistral. So put it this way, Andy Joyce just finished on a 17 foot and Ryan James not that far far behind on a 14 foot so Ryan James with his trademark paddle stroke there forcing that paddle in really snapping it back very powerful and that board obviously is working very well he'll be happy with that The headwind, you can see it there, the board nicely piercing all the way. Paul Simmons, second place, second place, 14 foot class, elite. Number 74, Crispin Jones, local boy, bringing it home. Marie Buchanan doing really well. She's probably only finished 10 places behind anybody, including the 14 foot and the unlimited. You can always tell Marie Powerly. She's putting a lot of effort in there. Why don't Marie Buchanan? Very accomplished waterman, Dave Hackford, Olympic windsurfer. Still got a lot to give, coming across the line. So these guys are starting to tire. They've had a headwind for the last three miles. And this is just the end of it. The tides are going against them, wind's going against them. They're just having to dig deep just to finish it off. Tight race is the tightest finish we've got coming up these two. We've got our Jimmy Lewis U-boat and starboard. We've got Simon from Braille on the starboard coming in. Oh, what a challenge right at the end. Oh, ben Fisher coming in third, 135 on his new Nash. 4th, 12th, 6th class, Giles, 144, well done. Here we are so with Paul Simmons who came in at second, really fighting hard just behind Ryan James, couldn't quite catch him at the end. What were the conditions really like out there? Yeah. Well the, the crazy thing about uh, paddling up here near, near Top Ness is that whatever the wind direction, you will not have the same wind behind you or with you all the way and going around the bend we had massive headwinds in both directions. There were times when the wind was helping us but other times when it was an absolute killer. And with the tide going that way as well, coming back was really tough in a lot of places. Yeah. And I tried to cut a lot of the corners to try and catch Ryan but it actually, I actually came a cropper in Grand Fin and uh, slowed up a lot and it was really hard work getting through the mud. And my blade was catching the mud as well. So, uh, so that would have cost you a bit of time there but um, looked like a good race and you managed to get it done and you know yeah. the, the conditions weren't uh, great for the start of it so doing the shorter race looks like it worked out and we're going to uh, get the cruisers coming in now. Yes, so. I think the, uh, the leisure fleet um, would be really struggling going into the wind so I don't think a lot of them would have got to Dartmouth so definitely the right call yeah. today I think. Cool, well done. Thank you. That's it, first place, 12-6, Emily King, Sup Gara, Worth Girl, well done, taking it home. Okay, here I was Sam Woods, who's just got first in the cruising class. What was this year's event like compared to last year's event? Well, they made a good decision not going all the way, I think, from Totnes down to Dartmouth. 
uh, up to the boy and back uh, was definitely the right move. Yeah. Everyone would have been finished. Definitely in the leisure class as well. Um, yeah, pretty similar setup to last year, I think. Maybe a little bit slicker this year. Yeah. Uh, I definitely prefer it this way, coming from Totnes down to Dartmouth. Uh, although that's just my preference. Yeah. But no, yeah, it was good. Good to see a good turnout. But if Alex from Nash bringing it in. 12-6, first place inflatable on his Nash. One series, bringing it home, number 50. with Ben Fisher, who just got third place in the 12.6 class. Last year did really well with the Nash One Design Racing on the ice up, and this year on a hardboard. What was it like, conditions, relatively similar headwind compared to a, a hardboard to an ice up race for you? Um, ice ups are, they're all right, but they're always going to compromise with um, being in flavor, aren't you? They haven't got the rigidity as yeah. a hardboard. Hardboards, you can't just get that cutting through. The water a bit easier and it's a bit slicker, so I think Conditions today probably a lot easier on a harder board like compared to a ice up, which is going to be um, not as not as like stiff yeah. straight through the waves. But no, I'm glad I'm hardboard. Glad with the result. It's first one in the series, first one on the hardboard. Kind of transition up to the hardboard. So yeah, bring on the rest of the series now. Yeah. So you ready to go? You're going to do most of the events this year? Are you going to? Yeah, plan to plan to do the five, well, at least five events. Kind yeah. of give it a shot at qualifying for the world at least, but. We'll see you early days. Yeah. Forty-eight thousand seeds, bleeds and goes from my memories of you. Now that I am clean. So Ryan, congratulations. Thanks, nice place. Nice yeah. win. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was, uh... How was it out there, condition-wise? Yeah, it was pretty, a bit of a headwind on the way back, um, but it was a grind. It was always going to be when they shortened the course, so um, which is unfortunate because uh, it really takes away from the tradition of the whole event. Yeah. But that's that's the weather. That's what you um, grow up with in the, in the UK. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was good, really good. First board prototype, so it was really interesting to see how the board went, and it went really well, it went like a dream. So, and it's not even a finished product yet. So, and was that the first time you paddled it? Uh, yes. So it's uh, yeah, it was pretty, so. pretty, it's pretty stable. Everything's going well. Pulled away from the rest of the 14s really well. Um, I mean, I'm not even in, in great shape yet, so I'm really pleased with the performance. Good. And just out to the viewers, I know they're going to be asking, like, what was the sort of width of that ball? Because that, that's brand new, it's been yeah. shaped like, or oh, what yeah. can't you tell us? What is that bracket? Is it? Well, it, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's 23, 23 and a half wide, um, so it's, it's pretty narrow, but again, my stability isn't that great. I'm pretty much renowned for not having the best uh, the best balance in the, in the, in the fleet, but uh, if I can stay on it, then anybody can. So it's just, it's built around me, so uh, there's some nice sharp rails to give some bite yeah. um, to make it more stable um, with a squared off tail. Uh, releases well, and it's, yeah, as it, as it showed, it, I mean, the event is very stable. So it's just about dialing yourself into that board uh, and making sure that, that just because it is narrow, don't shy away from it, because at the end of the day, it's like, it's like your mother giving you an old jacket when you were a kid, you'll grow into it. You do, you grow into the boards. Yeah, you do. And you will. Well, let's see if you grow into it for the rest of the season. That's right.